In this video, we're going to look at how to design a church flyer like this. And this is coming up. Hello everybody and welcome to the channel once again. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. If you're new here, please hit on the subscribe button if you're old here. Thank you so much for showing up. A link to download the resources that I'm going to use in this video will be in the description. Please be sure to check it out, excluding the pictures that I'm going to use today. So let's get into Photoshop and let's get started. All right. So here in Photoshop, I'm using Photoshop CS6. If you have any earlier versions, that is fine. You go to file and then you create a new document. So I'm going to use the international standard. So I'll go to international paper and for the size, I'm going to choose A3. I'll go ahead and then I will and click OK. Once it opens in a portrait mode for me, I'll go to image and then I'm going to image rotation and I'll rotate it either 90 clockwise or anti-clockwise, either of them. First things first, I'll go to the layer adjustment over here, go to gradient and I've already set a gradient that I'm going to use. So this is the gradient. These are the hex codes if you want to use them. So you go ahead and then you click OK. Once you have this, you click OK from here to and then you can move on. Now let's go back to the resources. I have the first image that I used over here, a background and I'll drag and drop it inside of Photoshop. So I'll place it right on top of this one. Hold Alt and Shift unless otherwise you are using a, an earlier version of Photoshop. So you drag it or you scale it up like this and you double click. Once you're done with that, you can go ahead to the blending mode and set this to overlay. Next off, we're going to change this particular line to 80%. We're going to reduce the opacity to 80%. And then you can press Ctrl T again to open this one up if it looks so small for you. So once you have this one, I think it is fine. The next thing that we do is we go for the rectangle tool over here. Create a rectangle around this side. Like it can go beyond this one. It doesn't really matter. So what you're going to do is you're going to change the color to white. So we change the color here to white you can make sure or you can place it almost at any place but you just have to make sure that it fits well for your design so it doesn't really have to be in the middle but then it should be somewhere around here and then you're going to make a duplicate of the same rectangle by pressing ctrl j press ctrl t and drag it around here because you're going to be putting some information over there now let's quickly go and change that particular color to any color over here so you click from this side or you can come down a little bit and then you click OK. This is going to serve as the background so you can group all of these ones. Press Ctrl G and then you can group this as the background. Next off, let me introduce the image, the main image because sometimes the image helps you to know the exact color combinations to use. So I have the image already here, which I'm going to use, but then I'm going to quickly show you how to get rid of the background because you're going to do it for almost all the other images that you have. So how to get rid of the background with the pen tool. The last time I used the polygonal lasso tool in this video, but then this time I'm using the pen tool. So all that you need to do is you drag it into your Photoshop. So you drag it over here and then once it opens like this, you can basically add any adjustments you want to do to this one example pressing ctrl shift and then l auto level the image if you press ctrl l it is going to bring the levels and then you can level it up a little bit make the skin tones look very nice you can add basically any adjustment to this before you get rid of the background so once you're done with that, you double click and then you click OK. Next off, you go for the pen tool. Now there are a couple of things that you need to know over here. If you come to this section, you have the shape and then the path. We're going to make use of the path. One interesting fact of using the pen tool is that you can even stop example when you start something like this. You can even stop, go back to your resources, do anything that you want to do before you come back to continue so i think it's a very interesting app if you want to use it to cut off your background but then if you are still new into photoshop and then you are finding it difficult you can simply use the polygonal lasso tool so with a pen tool all that you need to do is you start from the place that you want to start off 
so we make a point and then you basically go around the edges of the image like that and it gives you that kind of flexibility as compared to that of the polygonal lasso tool where you don't get to so you can basically left click and then create an edge or you can create a curve like that so if you are cutting say these points you can basically create a point here you hold and then you create that small curve over there if you want to cut a part also you can hold alt and then click over here to cut it off and then you can basically continue so i think it is going to be let me know in the comment section if you want to know a full detailed tutorial on how to use the pen tool in cutting and all those things let me know in the comment section so you basically go around the edges like that you can press ctrl and then plus to zoom in to know exactly where you are going so you left click hold and then you can basically create a curve like that so we see how it goes just like this you don't really need to get it all perfect because the refined edge will even help you with the best to make some awesome cutting so that is how it goes like that let me just quickly fast forward this area and get back to you when i'm done cutting so that i can get you through how to remove the background as well now this is actually one part that i didn't talk about in case you make a mistake by saying you cut into the image all that you have to do is for the first time you can press ctrl z to get back and if it has been like a couple of times you press ctrl alt and then z but if you are on the latest version of photoshop you still have or you can still use the ctrl z and then you are good to go after you're done with this one all that you need to do is you go around the image you basically don't have to come to this side if you remember the lessons from the polygonal also too you always have to go around the image because you want to get those backgrounds around the image not the subject itself so you go around the image and then you come back to the initial point where you started like this and it's supposed to create this particular kind of link or line however you want to put it for you from there all that you have to do is you right click you go to make selection and then you click ok so it's supposed to create a selection for you and then you can go back to the lessons from the polygonal lasso tool now over here you can even go and pick the polygonal lasso tool you hold shift and then you can create another set of selection for this part where you forgot to remove and then you can create this one once you're done with that all that you have to do is you hit on the delete button and then your background should be gone now you can go to the refine edges over here whilst you have your polygonal laxo tool you set this smooth to around 10 and then the radius around 0 0.005 it depends on the image that you are working on though so you can try different ways and then you hit on the delete button a couple of times like that and then it's supposed to refine the edges for you maybe i didn't really take my time to do this but then i think with a simple illustration that i've given to you you're supposed to have something good looking like this which we can transfer to the main image that we are working on so let me quickly go back and bring in the image that i worked on i took time to retouch it and did a couple of stuff to it so let's say we have this one all that you need to do is you select the move tool drag it to the main document that we set and then it's supposed to be like this you right click and then you add or you convert it to smart object so that it, it will keep the quality and then you press ctrl t to transform it out so you can transform it way bigger like this you try to make it big and i try to hide the wood under it so you can basically add it over here like that now let me try and make this even more bigger and then drag it over here i think around this side is going to be okay so i'll double click and then i'm going to add my test on top here so the first thing that i do is i go for my test tool i've already written the test over here just to save us all time okay so what i do is i copy the test and then i'm going to paste it the first set of tests is going to be acrobat i'm using the font acrobat 
I will link all the fonts in the description as well so you can check them out. So I'll go inside of this one. I'm going to select this all that is the Grace Family Center. I copy and select it all. I'm going to the toggle character and the test type is in all caps. So what I do is I press control V and then I'm going to paste that. Next of all, press control T to try to transform this one a little bit and then you can bring it over here. Even better still, you can just press control A to make sure that it is centered like that and then you can bring it down over here. As simple as that, right? Next off, you press control J to duplicate this test and then you drag it down a little bit like that. I'll go back to my test again, copy the location and then I'm going to select the test and I'm going to paste that. But then it doesn't have to be almost the same as the main test. So I'll press Ctrl T and then I'm going to transform it out to be a little bit smaller like this. So it is going to read the church name and then the location. Let me just quickly bring in my logo before I forget to bring it. So you drag and drop it inside of Photoshop. You can double click on this one. It's already in the smart object. So let's press Ctrl T and transform it out like this and then you can place it at the top right over there i think it looks simple and very good over there so you can just press ctrl t if it feels so big for you and then you place it right over here like that i just feel this image is so big let's try to transform it a little bit yeah i think this is going to but then if you are doing yours just take your time to <laughs> position it rightly okay let's just maintain this one so the next thing that we're going to add will be the main heading which is going to be the kingdom overflow so what i do is i go for the test tool and then i'm going to create a test over here okay so i'm going to use the font called poppins so i'm going to select my font and i'm going to use poppins over here and then i'll go to my resources or the test and then i'm going to select the kingdom so i'm going to paste it right over here and it's in semi bold you can make it a little bit bigger you press ctrl t and then you transform it like that so you take your time and then you position it let me zoom in so right over there just take your time to do that so what i did is instead of leaving it like this i went for the ellipse tool or the circle if you want to call it that way and i drew a very small circle and change the color you double click on the thumbnail over here and then you change the color to white and then i placed it inside of the kingdom so i'm going to transform it right over here to be as small as it can be like that the next one is the overflow so you can basically copy this one or you create your other test so let's just create another test over here but this time we want the smaller case to appear so you realize from here that if i copy my overflow and paste it it is still going to be in all caps so what i do is so i select it all and i use a font called beautiful people i'll link it up in the description as well and then you can see that it is still in caps so what i do is i go to the toggle character and check this one or uncheck that one and then you realize that the smaller case should be able to appear right over there so right from here we don't want it too close together because you realize that we've already set the tracking to minus 60 so it is affecting this one so let me just quickly change this one to 20 so that there will be enough space in between it let me just close this one so that it wouldn't distract you i press ctrl t and i'm going to transform this one out to be a little bit bigger like that and i'll double click on it i'm going to change the color i've already copied the color behind the scene so i'm going to paste it and that is the color that i use over there the yellow color that i used and then i'll click ok from here now the next set of tests that i did was the 2020 so i'm just going to copy this one double click on the t over here and then i'm going to change that particular font also to a font called bedman remember a link to download them will be in the description so i'm going to type 20 and then 20 and i'm going to bring it over here press ctrl t and transform it like that so i think this is going wayward so i'm going to hold ctrl and select these three and i'm going to push it to the left side a little bit so that there can be space for the 2020 
let me just go back and select the 2020 press ctrl t and i'm going to transform this one out like that i'll make another duplicate by pressing ctrl j and i'm going to duplicate it or bring it right beneath of the other one so i can select all these ones by holding shift and then pushing it to the left side a little bit like this i really forgot this ellipse so let me just bring it right over here like that now i don't want you to get confused let me just quickly group my test or my works so that it will be good for you so i'm just going to select from the grace to the image over here press ctrl g and group that one and call it the heading so you realize that if i turn this one off the heading is going to be off so i'm going to add the last section of this one before i group all of that so i'll go for my rectangle tool create a rectangle over here and i'm going to change the color to white and then i'll click ok i'll press ctrl t to transform it to make it a little bit smaller like that and then i i can position it over here so inside of that i'm going to write a knight of worship so you just write a knight of worship or basically i think i have it over here so let me just copy it in order not to make any typographic error okay so let me just select this one change the font to poppins back and then you can change this one to semi bold and then you press ctrl t to transform it like that and then you send it to your rectangle now you can change the color back to a grouping like a nice color let's say this particular color right over here or let's make it a little bit darker and then you can click ok and then ok from here as well once you're done with that we move to the next section of it so like i said i'm going to select right from the kingdom over here straight to the knight of worship press ctrl g and then i'm going to group that and i'll call it main so you realize from here i have my main and then i can press ctrl t to transform this one out and push it up on top a little bit like that so that it will be a bit separated from the rectangle because we're going to add a couple of images over here so i'm going to add the images that i have attached to this one i'm going to add it over here so first of all i'm going to select the rectangle tool over here i'm going to create a rectangle here it should be very small or quite okay because we need five of them and then we need to fill it with images as well so it has to be quite okay you press ctrl t and then you transform it to make a little bit nicer like this you can first experiment to make sure that you have all your five rectangles on point so the first thing that you're going to do is you press ctrl j to make a duplicate and then you hold shift and then you left click and drag it to the side like that as simple as that it should be on the same line with the same size and everything for you you can hold control and then you select the second one press ctrl j to make sure that a duplicate is made for you with a tool and then you can right click on the last one over here the rectangle you press ctrl j and then you can duplicate that over here so let me just bring that to be the first one so that we can just see it well over here so nice you take your time to make sure that the intervals also are very good the current version of photoshop helps you to make that wise or nice intervals so you select the first rectangle jump straight to the last one by holding shift and then you press ctrl t to transform that one out so it can be something like this I think it's going to be okay over here let's just make it like this right and let's even try to close it up like that and you bring it over here so these are the rectangles that we're going to insert all the images that we have we're going to give each of them a separate background i'm going to do like two of them and then i'm going to skip the video or i'm going to fast forward it so let's start from the first one right over here so you realize that you have rectangle 3.4 copied and then i'll go into my resources right over here this is the first image so i'll drag and drop it inside of photoshop and then i'll leave it over here what i'm going to do is i'm going to right click and i'm going to create a clipping mask it is going to fit right inside of the rectangle that we created so you press ctrl t to transform that one out 
like this and then you make sure it looks good in the rectangle so it all depends on who is behind the machine okay now what i did was i picked something a color that is quite related or that will bring up the image because you realize that this rectangle here with this color wouldn't match with this particular one so what i did is i selected each of the rectangles and gave it a color according to the subject that we're using so this particular color i picked up something from here and then i made sure that i will scale it up let me just go for this one here and then i make sure that i came for something way brighter like that so you realize that it fits straight with the background that is a very example of how you can give your background colors like according to the subject that you're using so after i'm done i'll click ok and i'll choose the second rectangle i'll go into my resources and this is the second image so i'll drag and drop it inside of photoshop and i'm going to right click and create a clipping mask i'll press ctrl t transform it like that and then you can position it over here so let's just zoom in if you hold z and then you right click it is going to zoom in for you so right over here and then i'll double click a rectangle or so and choose something from the attar so something from here but then you just have to make sure that it doesn't really blend with the background meanwhile it also fits with the background so something like that i think this is fine and then you do the same thing for the rest of the images so i'm going to select this one go into my resources and i'm going to fast forward right from here so i've already created a group for this one named it pictures and i've placed all my pictures in here because it's about getting quite confusing but then it's not going to be really confused i want to add the names to it so what i do is i select each of them again and i'm going to add a rectangle on top of that and then i'm going to add the names to it so let's see i'll go for my rectangle to like this create a rectangle and i'll right click and create a clipping mask now notice something from here you realize that when we are looking for a complementary background we chose something way above this time when we want another complementary color we can choose to go way beneath so something that works with the image okay so let's see even if you pick this particular color we can come down a little bit like this and pick the shot or the darkest one of it then it has to complement the color that is the basics of color concept in photoshop you choose the image and then you choose a color that complements it so you can use the high shadows and the low shadows to make or choose complementary colors so you click ok when you are done and then just like we did for the rest you're going to duplicate it for the others as well so you press ctrl j to make a duplicate you slide it over here and then you can quickly check we have our background over here so you have to bring this one right beneath here so let me just bring it over here and then you right click and create a clipping mask so it has to also be in there for you you double click on that and then you realize that we chose a very light one over here so you can slide it down or you can even go to the left over here and then you choose so you realize that the colors are complementing each other without any hesitation and then you do this one too for the next one so it's going on top over here right there right click and create a clipping mask so you hold alt or shift and then you drag it to this side and then you can change the color as well so i gave this one this color because i picked it or basically you can just pick it from here but because this one is already most like pink let me just give this one right over here now i'll do the same thing for the rest so once you're done with all this you can then go ahead and add your test so that one can be on top of all of that all the images all the arrangements that you've made so you can go for the test tool over here and then you start to you don't write directly inside the, the rectangle don't forget that rule so let me just go for this particular first name it's erica you're just going to copy that one 
and then i'm using the font called railway so it will be in the description you press ctrl t and then you transform it out like this you double click on it and then you can drag it back into the rectangle use your arrow keys take your time to position that and you have to make it a little bit smaller because some of the names are lengthy so it has to be in such a way that it is going to fill the rest so you press ctrl j you make a duplicate hold shift and then you drag it to the left side you go and select your test or basically you write your test select it all and then you paste it now that's all your images and the test and everything is set you can go back and close your group like this one and then you can zoom in to check out if everything is fine we have another image that we didn't actually bring in so this is the image so i'm going to drag it inside of photoshop like that and i'm going to place it right underneath of this image so i'm just going to close it up like this let me just even zoom in so that you can see it clearly over here and then you take your time because they were in a group that's why i couldn't actually get any part to place them but let me know in the comment section if you had like a better idea where you would have possibly placed this particular group over here and the last thing that we're going to do is we're going to add the date and the venue and any other thing that you want to add to this one so i'll go in here i have the date over here it was actually march 13 that i designed this one but then i'm going to just change the date so let me go for a test tool over here and i'm going to use the font poppins you know i really love poppins right i think it's literally becoming my favorite font so let me just change the color over here and let's reduce the size to i think medium is fine but let's reduce the font size over here so it affects the leading so let's close the leading also here as well and then you can bring that one here press ctrl t and then you can transform it to look good over here any other thing like the telephone or contact can be duplicated you press ctrl j to duplicate that and then you can actually add your telephone let me just add mine so anything like a contact detail you can just add them over here and the last thing that we're going to do is you press ctrl j again make a duplicate and then you give any other further um, information so i'm going to select doors open at 6 30 and i'm going to select this duplicated one select it all by pressing ctrl a and change the color to white and then you can change this one to regular so you press ctrl t transform it to make sure that everything looks good over there and then you can make a duplicate again hold shift and drag it to the left side and then i think we had an email as well so you can select your email copy it and then you can paste it over here now your flyer is almost done but let's add a bit of glow to it so let's quickly jump back to the main over here you remember the main go back to our resources and we have this optical lens flare over here let's quickly drag it into photoshop leave it somewhere around here you can take your time to open it up and place it somewhere around this side you double click on that change the blending mode to screen so that it will hide everything excluding the glow over there and then you can see how beautiful this looks and from there you can just right click and rasterize the layer go to filter blur and then gaussian blur and then you can add a bit of blur to it you don't have to make it that much big and you don't also have to make it that much small or too much small and then you can click ok from here so you can basically take your time to position it over here and then it can glow your work for you and from there your design or your flyer is done i hope this video was helpful before any other thing i want to say a very big thank you to the grace family worship center for allowing me use these particular images and all their names and everything i actually designed this for them you guys asked for the tutorial and i asked for their permission to use it in a tutorial so a big thank you to the grace family worship center i hope this video was helpful 
let me know in the comment section if it was for your feedback helps so much in building this channel thank you so much for sticking around to watch this video please don't forget to like and subscribe and i'll see you guys in the other one it's innocent here and bye